Let's make a colorful lighting display with a PicoDev RGB LED module and a Raspberry Pi. We'll connect these two together, get some example code working, and by the end of the tutorial, we'll even be able to control multiple modules independently. Let's get started. To follow along, you'll need a Raspberry Pi single board computer. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B today, a PicoDev RGB LED module and adapter for Raspberry Pi, and a PicoDev cable. 100 millimeter cables are great for Raspberry Pi projects. Mount the adapter to your Pi's GPIO, making sure that the Ethernet arrow points towards the Ethernet port. On a Pi 3, this will be a USB connector. Connect your PicoDev cable to one of the ports and connect the other end to your LED module. And I've mounted everything to this PicoDev platform to keep it nice and safe. We'll assume you're already comfortable using a Raspberry Pi like a desktop computer. If you need help with that, check out our Raspberry Pi for Beginners workshop. Power on your Pi, and go to Preferences, Raspberry Pi Configuration. We need to make sure we have I2C enabled. Under the Interfaces tab, find I2C and make sure it's enabled. In the article for this tutorial, find the download section and we'll download the example script. Right click that link, select Save Link As, and I'll save mine to a PicoDev directory in my home directory. I'll call that rgb.py. I'll right click that and open in Thony. And this code is ready to run. But before we do, just make sure you have PicoDev installed or upgrade it if you need to. Go to Tools, Manage Packages, and search PicoDev. That's with two eyes. Find the package and just click Upgrade or Install if you need to. Now we're ready to run. Press Control R to run the script and you'll see we get a red, a green, and a blue LED. And then they all go out. We start off by importing the PicoDev RGB LED driver module, and a function called wheel, more on that later. We import a sleep function to create a delay, and then we initialize our RGB LED module as LEDs. There's some predefined colors, and then we call set pixel zero red. That will set pixel number zero on our module to the color red. And likewise, pixel number one to green, and pixel number two to blue. So our pixels are numbered 0, 1, and 2. Now looking at these colors, they're actually defined as a three element list. The first element is the red component of the light, the second is the green, and the third is blue. And these numbers can be integers between 0 and 255. So of course, red is defined as all red and no green or blue. And you can see that in green and in blue as well. And there's a few other colors defined here, so we can have a bit of a play around. I'm going to change this green to magenta. And now when I run the script, we can see we have red, magenta, and blue appear on our LED module. It's actually the call to leds.show that updates the physical device itself. And then we sleep for 3000 milliseconds or three seconds, and finally call leds.clear, which blanks the display. If we comment out everything in example one, and uncomment everything under example two. I'm using the keyboard shortcut Alt-3 and Alt-4 to block comments. Let's give example two a run. We have our LEDs scrolling through various colors and curiously, our power LED is blinking as well. Let's check out the code. We start off with some state variables. Here we have a loop counter and a power LED state that starts off as true. Then in the infinite loop, we pick a color from the color wheel. This accepts an argument between zero and 360 degrees and returns some color. Then we pass that color into leds.fill. And here we don't have to call the show function because fill will automatically show. So that's what's handling our nice scrolling colors here. This next part of the code is toggling the power LED. If I mod 100 equals zero, that's basically saying every 100th time we go through this loop because I is incrementing by one every loop. So every 100th time we go through the loop, we call power LED state equals not power LED state. So we're basically toggling that true to a false or a false to a true. Then we pass that true or false into the power LED function, which will change the state of the power LED. We increment the loop counter and there's a short delay. So both the speed that we scroll these colors and the speed that we blink this LED are dependent on I and how much we increment it. We're incrementing it by one here, but if I change that one to a 10, and rerun the script, 
Now we are flying through the color wheel and that power LED is blinking really fast. I'm gonna stop that, that's quite distracting. We'll jump back to the tutorial and just grab the fade LEDs remix. And I'll create a new file, paste that in and run that. I'll call that fade.py. And now in an infinite loop, the LEDs fade on and then fade off. Just like before, we have the regular imports and setup. This time we're using two for loops, one that counts the red component of light from zero to 255. And then the next that starts at 255 and counts to zero each time decrementing by one. And we pass that into the red channel as well. So our loops just count the red channel up and then count the red channel down. And of course, we're calling fill, so we don't need to call show. Now I've set up a little diorama here of a traffic intersection. Here we have our traffic light A and it's scrolling through green, amber, and red. And here traffic light B is doing the same. So A is set up for traffic going this way and B is set up for traffic coming this way. And you'll see we're able to independently control the state of both of these traffic lights. Traffic light A is in the default state, just like our LED module has been for the whole tutorial so far. That's where all the ID switches are set to off and all the ID solder jumpers are unsoldered. Traffic light B, however, is exactly the same except for ID switch position number one. Here we have ID one set to on. In the code for this little project, you can see we set up traffic light A just like we have been so far in this tutorial, but traffic light B, we're adding the argument ID and it's a four element list. Here, each element in that list is the state of the ID switch or jumper. We've set ID switch one on, so we put a one in that place and a zero in every other place. If we had set ID switch number two on instead, then we would have a one in the second position and a zero in that first position. And so just by changing the state of that switch and passing in this new ID, we're able to control two modules independently. We define some colors for red, amber, and green, and the remaining code is just the sequencing of each traffic light for green, red, and amber. So here traffic flows one way and we have traffic light A set to green and traffic light B set to red. We transition through amber and then when traffic flows the other way, we have traffic light A set to red and traffic light B set to green. We transition through amber again and we go back to the start. You can find this code at the bottom of the tutorial article. If you wanna learn more about how to control PikaDev modules that have settable IDs, check out our PikaDev connection guide. So there you have it, a few of the basics on how to drive the RGB modules, and then a little more complicated a project at the end. If you make anything cool from these examples, or if you just have some questions, let us know on our maker forums. We're full-time makers and here to help. Catch you next time.